The real truth about disaster recovery is that it's whatever you want it to be. Any way of recovering your data and your service is an acceptable form of DR as long as it works, right? Now, we don't necessarily always get to set that bar ourselves. Industry and uh, government regulation might come in and set the bar a little bit higher, but that's just meant to be added on to what we're already doing. And Microsoft has a whole bunch of layers of disaster recovery that we don't necessarily get any say into, but they do a good job of, of us of keeping us informed, shall we say, on what they're doing so that we can take advantage of it uh, similar to like we can with the region pairs. We're going to talk about a specific concept called availability zones. Now an availability zone is another level of protection designed specifically as a DR measure for Microsoft that we can take advantage of in specific circumstances. If we take our mentally our map of the United States that we were looking at in our last video and we zoom in on, let's pick the uh, the Microsoft headquarters. We're going to go all the way up into the northwest. We've got over here on the side of Washington coast, we've got the Pacific Ocean over here somewhere, and Washington, and we've got west two. This is one of the regions up here in, uh, in the Pacific Northwest that Azure has available for us to specifically assign resources to live within. Now, within the West 2 region, there is absolutely going to be a data center, but there is nothing that says that there can't be two or even three data centers within the same region that would allow, for instance, a local power issue or perhaps a fire or well, perhaps a bad patch on a piece of networking infrastructure, like a bad firmware, right? You've got these localized issues that can still affect any kind of data center. These issues are just as prevalent today as they were in 1985. And Microsoft is giving us an opportunity to insulate ourselves against those sorts of things when we want to have the truly highest level of availability. Now, I did spend a few minutes trying to figure out exactly where these data centers are located. And I understand that there's probably one in Redmond, presumably, right? Microsoft headquarters. There's also a whole bunch of Microsoft stuff up in Bellevue. And there's also uh, a bunch of Microsoft stuff out in the middle of the state where there's all kinds of like really cheap power and real estate. I think it's farmland out there and data centers and old missile silo bunkers. <laughs> but I know that we've got at least three different spots that have Microsoft services. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that these are the Azure availability zones or something similar to it. The point that Microsoft wants you to know is not exactly where the address, street address is uh, of a data center. So much is to note that if you have a region, if it has the option for availability zones to be used, what does that mean? And in this case, what it means is that within our West US 2, the United States West 2 region up in the Pacific Northwest, there's at least three different locations of data centers within that region. This insulates, again, from local issues like, like fire, flood, or uh, any kind of problem with the, at the technical level. Now, Microsoft has like one super specific requirement for availability zones, which I think is really awesome. It's how we can go ahead and just ignore the fact we don't know exactly where these boxes are physically plugged in at because the connection between them all is required to be under two milliseconds. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. That is local area network good. That's I've had poorly configured local networks in buildings and offices that has not been that good. And they're saying that within this region, and I don't even know necessarily if it's all within the state of Washington, but within the West region, there are three different data centers that allow for availability zone deployments for, let's go over to the Azure portal and take a look at that specifically. Here we go, I've pulled up and logged into our Azure portal. Now we're gonna pull open our virtual machines. There are a few different items that you can do different resources that can take advantage of availability zones, but virtual machines, I think, has the, the, the most logical uh, deployment, right? If we're, we're putting a server, a virtual server out into space, into the Azure cloud, and we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new one right now. Going through the wizard here in the marketplace, take a look at the first few options, which are always the same. Uh, we're gonna skip past that. We're gonna go ahead and ignore our name. West US 2, this is the region we were just talking about, right? Here's what we came here for. 
availability options. Now we can go ahead and set availability zone. And then it gives us an option of picking one, two, or three. Note that is on us. We can do whatever we want. After that, we specify if we're putting a Linux server, or Windows server, whatever else, and all the other bits and pieces. We'll talk about this stuff here uh, in a bit. But availability zones are really cool because if you want to go ahead and, oh, geez, I don't know, maybe you've got 50 servers and you want to put 40 of them in zone three and you want to put 10 of them in uh, zone one and you put none of them in zone two because you uh, are superstitious and you don't like the number two. Like that's totally up to you. You can do that. And this availability zone again is representing each of the data centers that we've got in our region like we remember illustrating here in Washington. Now there's a caveat we have to talk about. A, uh, a Gotcha, if you will. Not really, if you think about it, but something that is worth pointing out specifically, especially if you're thinking about taking advantage of an availability zone as a form of DR for your organization's production services. That is, it's not in separate regions. The reason that regions are as far apart as they are is to remain insulated from each other's localized issues. Availability zones are not. It's possible that something that affects one city will affect the city down the road and possibly even the neighboring state. If we truly are concerned about high, high availability, we do want to take advantage of separate region deployments. Now, we have some mechanisms to make that a little bit easier. We'll talk about that here in a bit. But the availability zones, this is for localized insulation. It's worth noting that when you get down to comparing how much it costs for you to have services in separate availability zones versus in separate regions, the key difference, the key cost difference is that an availability zone is considered local, which means networking traffic between the two is local. You're not charged for it. Networking traffic that crosses the region barrier is considered outbound downloaded traffic. You are charged for that. What way? But really what we're just going to take away from this is that an availability zone is an option for distributing our services within data centers within the same region. Same region is a key point there. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.